When it comes to British comedians, most people immediately think of such comedy giants as Jimmy Carr, Stuart Lee, Eddie Izzard, or Dara O'Brien. Only a small portion of the audience includes Simon Pegg in their lists. On one hand, it's understandable because unlike the aforementioned comedians who devoted most of their lives to stand-up comedy, Pegg at some point in his life focused on a film acting career, which among the British comedy community is not seen as a real manifestation of comedic art. But for me, the absence of Peg in the list of Britain's best comedians seems somewhat unfair, because the characters he played on screen are directly related to the genre of comedy, and some of his films I can even confidently include in the list of the best films of the genre. This video will talk about the least obvious but one of the funniest comedians in Britain. Enjoy watching. For the first time, I'll start a video in this section with a personal story, which is directly related to the hero of this video. This story takes place somewhere in 2013. At that time, Twitter was just beginning to gain popularity, which I didn't and I still don't share, but at that time I was interested to see what this new social network that everyone was talking about was. I downloaded the app and the first person I decided to follow on Twitter was Simon Pegg. And then something quite unexpected happened. As for many, Twitter was still new and not everyone understood what was what. I think that's what happened. Simon Pegg probably clicked somewhere wrong and accidentally followed me back. As a result, I found Simon Pegg among my followers. Or rather, my only follower. Because I didn't and still don't use Twitter. And I could have stretched the truth to admit that he was interested in my account, but there were no posts there, so no chance. But soon, Pegg realized something was wrong and quickly unfollowed me. But nevertheless, the actor was among my followers for more than a day. So this is not only a story about one of the best comedians in Britain, but also about my follower on Twitter. And we should start the story from the beginning. Simon Pegg was born on February 14, 1970 in Brockworth, England. According to Pegg, he dreamed of becoming an actor from childhood. When Simon turned 16, he went to college where he studied drama and English literature. After graduating from college, Pegg enrolled at the University of Bristol in the Department of Theatre and Film. Since the choice of university was directly related to Pegg's dream of an acting career, he became one of the few actors who did not drop out of university and ended up with a degree, even a bachelor's degree. Having defined a comedic direction for his career after university, Pegg moved to London where he began performing on stage as a stand-up comedian and also tried his hand at parody and improvisation genres. For quite a long time, his comedic career was limited to performances exclusively in local stand-up clubs. But in 96, Pegg finally got a chance to make a mark on television when he joined the cast of the miniseries Asylum. The series didn't attract any particular attention from viewers, but it played an important role in Pegg's career. The director of Asylum was Edgar Wright, and it was during their joint work on the series that a friendship between the actor and director developed, which would later result in several successful collaborations. Despite the complete lack of viewer interest in Asylum, Pegg still managed to attract attention on TV. Alongside numerous film attempts, Simon continued to actively perform in the stand-up comedy genre, and in 99 he debuts on the BBC with his stand-up performance. Unlike his film debut, Pegg's debut as a stand-up comedian was far more successful. The audience liked the young comedian's performance, which allowed Pegg to stay on the BBC for a long time, where he performed not only as a stand-up comedian, but also participated in comedy sketches and various TV shows. 99 was also a favorable year for Pegg's film career. He starred in the series Hippies, which was quite warmly received by viewers, and in the same year, his friend Edgar Wright again invites the actor to work together, offering him a role in the series Spaced. This time, their joint work attracted much more attention from the audience and received high ratings from both viewers and critics alike. By the way, the audience's love for the series will help Wright and Pegg in the creation of their next project, but more on that later. A significant factor in positive reviews was the presence in the series of Nick Frost, who got into the project thanks to Pegg. Learning that Wright was in search of an actor for one of the roles in the series, Pegg suggested the director take his friend Nick Frost, whom he had met when they shared an apartment in London. During their contributions, Frost and Pegg became best friends and helped each other write monologues for their stand-up performances. Therefore, knowing about the actor's search for the series, Pegg considered Frost an excellent candidate for the role. After auditioning, Wright also thought so and approved Nick for the series. It was during the filming of Spaced that this popular trio of Pegg, Frost, and Wright was formed. However, it was still five years until the premiere of the film that would make them famous. 
Until then, Pegg continued to perform as a stand-up comedian and settle for small roles in series. The other members of the trio weren't doing any better. Frost was also getting by with episodic roles, and Wright even withdrew from cinema to film music videos. In 2003, this state of affairs stopped satisfying everyone, and Pegg, together with Wright, sat down to write the script for a film which, according to their idea, was supposed to be a comedy about zombies. As Pegg confessed, they based their future work on George Romero's Night of the Living Dead, and reimagined it in a comedic light. That said, he and Wright tried not to turn their movie into a parody of Romero's film, but to create a standalone comedy. The result was Shaun of the Dead, where Wright was the director and Pegg and Frost played the lead roles. The film was a genuine revelation for comedy fans. Despite a modest budget of $4 million, the film managed to gross $30 million at the box office, receive high scores from viewers and critics, and become one of the best comedies of that year. Among those who were thrilled with the film was George Romero, whose movies inspired Wright and Pegg while writing the script for Sean. Eventually, Romero even decided to invite Pegg and Frost to play zombies in his film Land of the Dead, which was released in 2005. Another popular filmmaker who turned out to be a fan of Shaun of the Dead is Quentin Tarantino, who included the film in his list of the top 20 best films in his opinion. However, unlike Romero, Tarantino didn't invite Pegg or Frost to his projects settling for just laudatory reviews in the film's favor. The film also marked a couple of quite interesting cameos. Firstly, Edgar Wright himself appeared in the film, playing one of the zombies, as well as Coldplay frontman Chris Martin, a longtime friend of Simon Pegg, who agreed to participate in the film solely due to his friendship with the actor. Incidentally, Chris and Pegg's friendship has only grown stronger over time, and Chris even became the godfather of Pegg's daughter, while Pegg in turn christened the child of Martin and his ex-wife, Gwyneth Paltrow. Returning to the film, it's worth mentioning that due to the modest budget, Wright and Pegg encountered some difficulties during the production of Sean. For instance, for shooting the zombie crowd, they needed extras, which the comedy creators couldn't afford. Then Wright and Pegg resorted to a small trick. They remembered that their previous work Spaced had quite a large fan base. They posted on the series fan site that they needed people for extras for their next project and that they were willing to pay them a dollar per shooting day. The fans' love triumphed over mercantilism, and in the end, the zombies that appear in the film are mostly fans of the series Spaced, who starred in the film almost for free. After the success of Shaun of the Dead, the trio found themselves in the limelight. Frost and Pegg were immediately considered among the best comedians in Britain. However, not everyone agreed with this assertion. Compared to America, where for 80% of comedians an acting career is a logical continuation of their stand-up comedy career without causing any dissonance, in Britain there is more reverence towards representatives of the comedy genre. The so-called true comedian is only one who predominantly performs in front of a live audience, instead of running around on film sets. Therefore, after Sean, people began to say that Pegg, who had recently successfully performed stand-up, was not a comedian, but an actor. Whether this opinion is objective or not is for British comedians to decide. Personally, I've always thought the only important criterion for a comedian is to be funny. Whether they achieve this on the theater stage or on the cinema screen doesn't really matter. Pegg apparently wasn't too bothered by this evaluation of his work, and preferring film shoots to stand-up concerts continued in this direction. The success of Shaun of the Dead led to the release of two more films from the popular trio. In 2007, Hot Fuzz was released, and in 2013, The World's End premiered. All three films were grouped into a trilogy called Blood and Ice Cream, or the more popular Western title, The Three Flavors Cornetto Trilogy. Cornetto is the name of Edgar Wright's favorite ice cream, which he admits to eating every time to cure a hangover. Cornetto is the linking element in these seemingly unrelated films, as it appears in one form or another in each film of the trilogy. As for how viewers received the subsequent parts of the trilogy after Sean, it was not so clear-cut. Hot Fuzz did very well at the box office. With a budget of $16 million, the film grossed $80 million and received high ratings from both viewers and critics. Like with Sean, the film also featured cameos from popular figures, notably Peter Jackson and Kate Blanchett. Fans of Shaun of the Dead made appearances in the movie. On the other hand, The World's End was not as successful. With a budget of $20 million, the film was able to gross $46 million, and in terms of ratings, it performed slightly worse compared to the previous parts of the trilogy. Nevertheless, Pegg started getting offers for new projects much more frequently. In 2006, he was even invited to Hollywood to star in a blockbuster. 
the third part of the popular franchise Mission Impossible, which some viewers consider the best part of the Ethan Hunt film series. However, the film demonstrated the lowest earnings out of all of the films in the franchise, grossing $397 million with a budget of $150 million. For Peg, despite the minor role, participating in the Mission Impossible film was an excellent opportunity to make a name for himself in Hollywood. In addition, the character played by Peg became popular with the audience, so the producers decided to keep him in subsequent parts of the franchise. At the same time, the actor did not forget to please his fans at home, producing excellent films with his participation. One such work was the film Big Nothing, where Peg starred alongside David Schwimmer. The film did not attract much interest from viewers, earning only $600,000 at the box office, but in my opinion, it turned out to be a pretty good black comedy. Having become friends during the shooting with the Friends star, Peg appeared in Schwimmer's directorial work the following year, which was the comedy Run Fat Boy Run. The film was well received by viewers and with good ratings managed to collect $33 million at the box office with a budget of $10 million. But the comedy, How to Lose Friends and Alienate People, despite the presence of popular actors like Jeff Bridges, Megan Fox, and Kirsten Dunst, could not boast a positive reaction from viewers. With a budget of $28 million, the film barely managed to collect $19 million. After this, the actor began to gradually distance himself from British cinema and focused more on Hollywood. In 2008, he took part in dubbing the cartoon Clone Wars, thus partly fulfilling his childhood dream. The actor has been a fan of Star Wars since childhood and has repeatedly confessed that he has always dreamed of touching the popular Star Saga. But on this, Peg decided not to limit his star journeys, and in 2009 he ventured into another popular franchise by acting in the reinterpretation of Star Trek. The film, with a budget of $150 million, grossed $385 million at the box office, and in terms of ratings, was well received by viewers, which led to two more sequels, which also included Peg. After this, the actor again tried his hand at dubbing and lent his voice to the characters of several popular projects. First, dubbing the character named Buck from the third part of the cartoon Ice Age. In 2010, he and Nick Frost dubbed the Thompson Twins in the movie about Tintin, and also Peg's voice speaks the mouse Reepicheep in the movie The Chronicles of Narnia, The Voyage of the Dawn Treater. In 2011, Peg, having finished with voiceover, returned to leading roles, at the same time reuniting on one screen with his friend Nick Frost, starring in the movie Paul. The viewers were glad to see their beloved actors together on screen again, which was reflected in the high ratings of the movie, and its box office collections which amounted to $90 million. While the traditional image of a simple guy mainly always found a response from viewers, the actor himself continued to experiment and appeared in roles unusual for the audience. In 2011, he appeared in the film A Fantastic Fear of Everything, as a paranoid children's story writer who decides to write crime novels. The film itself did not stand out with special attention and could only cover the cost of electricity during its creation. But at the same time, Peg's performance was noted in a positive way by many. Perhaps the actor's most successful deviation from the usual image was his role in the film Hector and the Search for Happiness, where he starred alongside Rosamund Pike. The role of a psychiatrist named Hector, who at a certain point decides to go on a world trip to figure out himself, became one of Peg's best works. The film itself entered the list of the best films with his participation, demonstrating high ratings from viewers. The return to the usual role occurred in 2015, with the release of the film Absolutely Anything, in which Peg starred alongside Kate Beckinsale. The film did not stand out with any originality, and essentially represented a British version of the film Bruce Almighty. But at the same time, it cannot be said that this was a disadvantage of the film and it managed to find its audience although not numerous, considering the box office of $6 million. In 2015, Peg fully realized his dream when he had a small cameo in the seventh episode of Star Wars. In the same year, he starred in the melodrama Man Up, and again, as in the case with Hector, his comedic but at the same time deeper role caused a lot of positive reviews from both viewers and critics. On the other hand, his appearance in the film Terminal, where the actor starred alongside Margot Robbie, on the contrary, did not cause much enthusiasm from anyone. Which can be said about the film itself, which collected $800,000 at the box office, showing mainly negative reviews from viewers. An even bigger failure for Peg was the film Lost Transmissions, released in 2019. The film was watched by viewers who, for some reason, stumbled upon it by accident. And they were, to put it mildly, not thrilled with what they saw. At that time, Simon Pegg was hit by the Comedian Syndrome, who at a certain point decides that it's enough to make people laugh and it's time to show his dramatic side. 
viewers were waiting for him to return to his usual and beloved comedic role, but the actor continued to experiment. When no one allowed him to experiment on big screens anymore, Pegg decided to move to streaming platforms. And by the way, he debuted on them quite successfully, starring in one of the most popular TV series of our time, The Boys. But what is no less important, the ratings of the series did not lag behind its popularity and the project went already to the fourth season, which is unlikely to be the last. After adapting to Amazon Prime, the actor appeared in another streaming service series, titled Truth Seekers. This time, much to the fans' delight, it was a comedy in which Peg once again starred alongside Nick Frost. The series was rather well received by viewers, but demonstrated less convincing ratings, due to which Truth Seekers was limited to only one season. Peg's appearance in the thriller Inheritance was quite unexpected, in which he played one of the leading roles alongside Lily Collins. However, this surprise was not one of the pleasant ones, but rather one that was accompanied by the question, why? The film was very coolly received by viewers, and having collected 304000 at the box office, was quickly forgotten by all. Experiencing not the most successful period of his career, Pegg remembered that he previously excelled at voicing characters in animated films, and in 2022, he lent his voice to a cat named Bob in the cartoon Luck. The voiceover experience was again successful for Pegg, and the cartoon demonstrated quite good ratings, especially outside the US. Among the upcoming projects with the actor's participation are the thriller The Undeclared War, the animated film Agent Elvis, and of course, another part of the Mission Impossible franchise. Unfortunately for many fans of the actor, there is not a single comedy with his participation in the list of upcoming premieres. Undoubtedly, Simon Pegg was never a star in the sense that is usually implied by this word. His participation in a project never guaranteed successful box office earnings for the film, but at the same time, in most cases, could guarantee viewer love, if we're talking about his comedy pictures. Comedies with his participation, while mocking the cliches of one or another film genre, never slid into outright vulgarity and represented a complete picture with a high level of irony not just a set of amusing sketches. Perhaps that's why these films fell in love not only with the viewers, but also with representatives of the film industry. Despite the fact that apparently Peg is focusing on more serious roles, one would like to believe that in the future, the popular trio in the face of Frost, Peg, and Wright will unite again to please viewers with their new work. On this note, I'll finish my video. This was Simon Pegg's story. If you liked the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye everyone, see you soon.